Welcome, 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 come in, come in, come in, let me know who you are, where you're from. Welcome to the 5812 Solution page. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do, 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 do. Glory, 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 Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. I seek it till I abandon. I Say hello, say hello, say hello. Let me know who you are. Let me know where you're coming from. Greetings, Sister Evelyn. It's good to see you on. Oh, you are welcome. You're welcome. <coughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just wait for a little while and just for some other people to come on. And we see, we take it from there. Glory to God. Good to see you, sis. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Hey, Sister Marcia. You are welcome here. It's good to see my sisters. Glory to God. Let me see your comments. Give me some waves. So I know you're there. Let me feel the love. Good evening, Sister Evelyn. And say hello to each other as well. Say hello. Hello, sis. Sister Marcia, good to see you. Glory to God. Say hello to your friends. Say hello to everybody. Everyone just say hello to everybody. Because we are a community here. We are not, we're knitted together. So let's do this together. It's good to see you all. It's good to see you all. I know this was a bit random, but I'm just being obedient. I haven't got any fancy set up here. I tell you, I, I don't I don't even know if I'm doing this right. Can everybody hear me? Just let me know if you can hear me as well. Yeah. Let me know if you can hear me. Just say, yes, I can hear you. Oh, that's nice. That's right. Just say hello to everybody. Yeah, Sister V is in the house. Everybody just greet each other. Say hello to each other. Let everybody know where you're coming from. Welcome to the 5812 Solution page. This is where the Lord has called us to rebuild, to build, to raise, to repair and to restore. We are all about reconciliation. In this ministry, we're all about turning the hearts of people back to God. And a lot of the time we teach and preach a lot of the things, or that's what we're going to do. We're going to teach and preach a lot of the things that you don't really hear in the church today, sadly enough. The things that people don't really want to hear about. They like this comfortable Christianity, but that's not what it's all about. We are trying to push ourselves and we're trying to bring ourselves closer to God. 
we want to chase God. We want to be God chasers. We have to be God chasers. We can't just be church goers. I'm seeing my people on here. I'm seeing my people on here. Glory to God. It's, it's even such a beautiful thing to see the brookies just, just there, live and correct first. You know, we give glory to God. We give glory to God. If you see my eyeballs going up all the time, it's because I put my notes on the laptop. I didn't want to keep going off on a tangent, you see. So um, I put my notes on the laptop. Um... I just wanted to have some kind of structure, but as time goes on, I'll prepare much better for it. Because like I said, I wasn't prepared. I just said, I'm just coming on here and I'm just going to put what the Lord has put on my heart and we're going to take it from there. We're going to take it from there. Can you not hear the music in the background? Because I like the atmosphere to be, you know, just kind of nice and smooth and stirring you know if it's too loud tell me it's too loud oh sister bobby's in the house and pastor herman is in the house this is good this is good this is good this is good i'm happy to see my people on here glory to god glory to god glory to god glory to god so as i said i've got all my notes on my laptop in front of me so you see my eyeballs going up all the time i'm not convulsing or anything i'm just looking at the laptop because that's where everything is you see so that's what we're going to do that's what we're going to do today today we're going to be talking about repentance it's been something that's really heavy on my heart because I've seen that um, what we find a lot in, in the house of God, what we find a lot with Christianity is that um, so many of us, we're really sorry for the things that we have done. But, you know, we don't see any change. We don't see any transition from maybe a sinful nature as such to a full transformation and walking in the things of God. Um yeah, it has been heavy on my heart. I want us to talk about it. Um, I know there will be some people on here. Hey, Brother Patrick, it's good to see you. Yeah, I want to. I really want us to address this issue. Um, like I said, my, I've got some notes down here, but uh, as time goes on, I'm just going to get deeper into it. We're going to go deeper into scripture. That won't be today. Today is just kind of an intro um so yes bear with me bear with me bear with me glory to god i'm so happy to see all my brookies in the house i've got my leaders i've got my my team members it's wonderful prophetess audrey you are welcome see it's one of the difficult things i know i'm just i'm, I'm talking a lot here i know but let's have a conversation, okay? You are, we're, we're people. All right. Um, one of the things that really bothered me about coming on the live is that I'm just looking at my face. You know, I don't even talk to myself in the mirror. So seeing myself on video, it's like on, on camera, it's like, okay, this is a bit strange. Um, but anyway, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. So anyway, I just want us to lift up prayer. I just want us to just to just to start to give glory to God. This is a day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice in it. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to see you all here. Um, and I just want us to just lift up our voices and begin to thank the Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We bless your name. We glorify you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this evening. We thank you, Lord, that many who are on this live today, they went out and you brought them back in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your covering, Lord. We thank you that even though we're going through some tough times, Lord, you have kept us. Father, we thank you that our praise is a weapon even though the enemy wants to bring us down the enemy wants to keep us silent but we will not keep silent glory to God I am here today because I made a decision not to keep silent I made the decision to open my mouth I made that decision father God you said to me that I should open my tap and let the water flow out there are many who need to drink from me 
and I have opened my taps, Lord. Father, I thank you for giving me the strength. I thank you, Lord, for giving me the strength. I thank you, Lord, for my sisters, for my brothers who are here today. Glory to God. We give you all the praise, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise, Lord. We give you all the glory. Father, I open my mouth wide. Your word says, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Fill my mouth, Lord, with words of wisdom. Fill my mouth, Lord, with words of comfort. Fill my mouth, Lord, with words of exhortation. Fill my mouth, Lord. If there are warnings, fill my mouth with warnings, Father. Father, today... I open my mouth to teach. I open my mouth to preach, Lord. I open my mouth to comfort. I open my mouth to encourage. Father, do with me as you will. Do what only you can do, Father, in the lives of these people, in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the worship. Oh, Sister Michelle, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. I've got a feeling that this live is kind of lagging behind a bit but whatever the case i know you're going to hear everything so it's all good so let me know if you want me to talk louder or talk softer or just let me know if there's anything you want me to do i think i saw sister ingrid here this is really good i'm seeing my people here and i give god all the glory i hope this will be an encouragement for some of you who are there listening to me, knowing that you need to open your mouth. Let this be an encouragement to you. Let this be an encouragement to you. And that is the reason why I've come on today to talk about repentance, because this action, what I'm doing now is an act of repentance, but I will explain that a little bit later. It's an act of repentance. (laughs) I'll explain it a little while later. So yes, we give God the glory. So as I said, um, for you that have just come on, welcome everybody. Welcome. Uh, Welcome man of God. I think um, man of God, Stephen Halliburton that's on. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. And congratulations for the Brook House, the Brook Place that's going to be down in the US. I've forgotten exactly where. Um, I'm not familiar with the US, but I do know I will be there. I don't know when, but I'm definitely going to come down and cheer it on. The Brook House, I love the fact that the Brook House, the Brook Place is in the place. All my Brookies, all my sisters, all my brothers. Hey, let's do this. Let's do this. However, okay, so let's let's talk. You know, one of the issues that um, is really touching my heart is that Repentance is a subject that is rarely talked about in churches today. That's it, Clarksville, Clarksville, that's it, Clarksville, Tennessee. Whoop, 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 whoop. Brook Place in Clarksville, Tennessee. We are growing, we are glowing, we are going. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, as I was saying, repentance is something that we don't really hear in the churches these days. There are many people that are being starved of very principal teachings in the house of God. And because of that, many people are perishing. Many people are destined to, to, to perish to destruction because they're not hearing what they're supposed to be hearing. You know, we have a lot of talk about prosperity, which is not a bad thing, mind you. We have a lot of talk about everything other than holiness purity, repentance, and the things that need to be heard to sober the believer up and prepare them for eternity. It's a big problem. It's a big problem. I I wouldn't say that I'm fully mature in the things of God, but I want to get there. And I've made an informed decision to chase God, to chase God. I don't want to be just a church goer. I don't want to sit down in the church and just be nodding and smiling my head and saying hallelujah, you know, but um, it's something that really needs to be addressed. It's something that we need to teach more about. We need to preach more about. I just thank God again for the Brook Place. I thank God for my father in the Lord, um, Apostle Oscar Gobadia and Pastor Triumph Gobadia. They are leaders, my mother, my father. I give glory for their lives. 
uh, since I came to the Brook Place, I've been so blessed. I've been fed. I've been watered. You know, I thank God for my leaders. I thank God for Prophetess Bobby, for Prophetess Audrey. I thank God for Sister Marcia, all the leaders, Sister Janae, all the leaders. I, If I've missed some out, I know I've missed some out, but forgive me. I, I just thank God for all my leaders. I thank God for all the team leaders, the workers, the congregation, the oversights of the church. We are learning so much and there are things that need to be said in the house of God that if they're not said, then we will end up going by the wayside. There are things that many pastors and men and women of God are afraid to say because they think, oh no, the, um, the, 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 the congregation will leave. People will leave because they'll be offended. There are many things that Jesus said in the Bible that offended people, but it needed to be said and they need to be said, you know, so repentance is something that we really need to address it's something that we really need to talk about as i said before so it's really preached about in churches today um and uh they they, they make so many excuses like uh, or for it for instance justifying the fact that okay we're in a different dispensation now so uh we don't need to talk about repentance now where did i get that from there's a particular scripture in the bible Acts chapter 16 from verse 30 to 31 and that particular scripture is the the scripture where Paul and Silas were in the prison cell and they were praising and they were praising and they were praising and they were praising my God you can imagine the glory that came down and what happened is that there was an earthquake there was a shaking and and the foundations uh, they just broke their chains became loose and everything else meanwhile while that was happening there was a, a Philippian jailer who was sleeping and he was awoken by this shaking and everything. And when he woke up, he saw that all the chains were broken off and he's thinking, oh my God, I'm done for. Here I am sleeping. I wake up and all the chains are broken loose, loose that the prisoners have all gone. You know, what's, what's happening? So then the, the jailer pulled out his sword to just you know, just kill himself because what else is he going to do? And then Paul just kind of shouted out, hey, yo, just relax, relax, relax. We're here. We're here. We're here. You know, so the jailers now seen this manifestation of power and said to himself, look, you know, Paul, man, you, you, you need to tell me, you need to tell me how I can be saved. And I, I need to know. And Paul said to him, that you should believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and your house. You see now, because he said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and your house, right? People are using that scripture and saying that, oh, now all we need to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and we'll be saved. And that's it. Yes, it's really important that we have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But repentance, repentance, repentance is needed, is always needed, is always needed. You see? So now this is some of the issues that we're having today. Like I said, my eyeballs are going to be rolling up a lot. I'm not convulsing. I just wanted to let you know I'm not, I'm not convulsing. I'm just looking at the, the, the laptop in front of me, right? So, so this is some of the issues that we're, that we're seeing. So what is repentance? What is it really all about? What's, what is it all about? I think sometimes it's necessary that even though we may know what repentance is, <coughs> I think we have to have some constant uh, refreshers and some reminders. Not all of us, but sometimes we need to be reminded so that we don't go stale, we don't falter. Sorry if I keep coughing, but it's so interesting how when I decided that I'm going to do this live today, I've been fine all day. I've been fine all week. And then all of a sudden I'm getting this uh, cough in my chest, but I will talk. Amen. So anyway, um, it's like, dare I say it, that, you know, it's really quite, can be quite questionable and quite doubtful, you know, if certain people are actually born again, because you know, their understanding of repentance and understanding of what it takes or what it means, you know, to come into the things of God, to, to become a believer, to become a Christian is somehow a bit faulty, you see. So 
it's something that constantly needs to be talked about so people are aware i'm aware of people who believe that because they went and got baptized that they're saved but what's the point in um, going to get baptized you haven't repented from your sins you haven't turned away from sin and you haven't believed on the lord jesus christ as your lord and your personal savior <coughs> then you've just gone and had a bath you just had a dip and then that was it really you know but some of these people they don't understand that so how many people who think that they're going to eternal life they're going to eternal life but they're actually going to perish is quite scary you know uh, what we find out is the bad news is that um, the sinfulness of sin is sent it's seldom recognized it's seldom talked about in the church today you know and it, it is it is a problem most people you see a lot of people running to Christ or they run to the church because they think oh if I become a Christian then I'm gonna get promotion <coughs> I'm gonna get promotion <coughs> I'll get riches I'll get my healing I'll get my husband I'll get my wife you know they just think that it's a benefit package and then that's it you know uh, but it's not that it's not that so we need to look more we need to go deeper into uh, the teachings of repentance we need to teach it in our churches we need to teach it to our children we need to teach it to our work colleagues our friends the people who are around us it's not just about the benefits of Christianity <coughs> it's not just about breakthrough it's not just about healing it's not you know just about prophecy it's not about uh, visions and miracles but some of these ground principles they need to be addressed so let's look at some of the, the the root meaning of repentance is to change your mind it's a change of mind or a change of purpose you know and it's a sincere when i say sincere it's heartfelt from the heart a sincere and thorough changing of your mind and your disposition in regard to sin i'll say that again the root meaning of repentance is a change of mind or purpose it is a sincere and thorough changing of the mind and disposition in regard to sin so now when we talk about repentance repentance involves a change of view we're going to look at three things today a change of view a change of feeling and a change of purpose a change of view a change of feeling and a change of purpose so we're going to look at three elements the first element we're going to look at is the intellectual element so the intellectual element as i said involves a change of view with regard to sin with regard to god and with regard to ourselves sin sorry i'm being distracted because my son's just popped his head through the, the sitting room door so it says that sin here is not regarded merely as a weakness it's not like a mistake it's just it's not like just an unfortunate happening that happened or like i said a drastic mistake you know but we're going to look at it first as a personal guilt a personal guilt what do i mean by a personal guilt if we look at somebody like i think a perfect person to talk about when we're talking about repentance is david in the bible if we look at uh, in Psalm 51 verse 3, I hope you've got your Bibles. I forgot to say that have your Bibles with you because we are taking everything that we're talking about is in the Bible, you know, and I don't want you to just take my word for it. If I'm moving too fast, then you just take down notes and then go and look at it after. So in Psalm 51 verse 3, three david said i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me this is personal guilt personal guilt i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me you see so <clears throat> 
another scripture is Romans 3.20, which says, For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So now we can also look at sin being recognized as a transgression against God. As we said, we talked about with regard to sin as sin itself, God and ourselves. So as I said, we can recognize sin as a transgression against God. See, from the human viewpoint, David's sin, from the human viewpoint, David's sin was against who? Bathsheba and Uriah, her husband. Yeah. Now, I will tell you to note down 2 Samuel chapter 11. You can read that in your own time. And then you will see the whole drama there. I mean, we've watched dramas on TV, all sorts. But when you read 2 Samuel chapter 11, there's a whole lot of drama going on there. You know? See, but David came to realize that um, he had also sinned against the law of God. And where do we see that? We see that in the following verse. The same uh, Psalm 51 verse 3. When we move down to Psalm 51 verse 4. It says, against you and you only, against you, you only have I sinned and done evil in your sight. So he realized that he had transgressed against God. So he had realized his own personal guilt when he says that he had not acknowledged his transgressions and that his sin was ever before him. And then he had acknowledged his transgression against God. Against you and you only have I sinned and done evil in your sight. And then we can look at it here as well. Sin is also recognized in its relationship to ourselves as well. You know, so not only is the sin just the guilt before God, but then we also look at sin as how it defiles us, it dirties us, it pollutes us. What am I talking about here? In the same Psalm 51 from verse 7, David prays a, he prays a prayer. It says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. So he's talking about cleaning himself. So he's very aware that he has polluted himself. He's defiled himself, that he is unclean before God. You see? So we look at sin as itself, we look at sin against God, we look at how we realize the guilt that we feel when we do what we do, and how we acknowledge that we have done what we have done, and how it is a transgression against God, and also how it pollutes us, you see, glory to God. Is everyone with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Am I going too fast? Am I too calm? I'm trying to be as simple as possible because I know sometimes my English, I'll come with some big, long, my long words. I try, I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to keep it simple. So let me know. Let me know if everyone is okay and we are called to go on. If we're not, just tell me to stop. Amen. <laughs> you know, so as I was saying, so we see that this is the intellectual element. Oh, my Pops is in town. Glory, glory, glory. Hello, Pops. Hello. Yes, it's all about the purple. I don't know if you've noticed, everybody, but I've just been on this purple thing. You know why? Because I'm royal, you see? And I have to show, I have to show, it has to shine. So purple is royal, so we have to do the purple thing. I'm loving the purple lipstick. I'm just loving the purple. So, yeah, get used to it. You're going to see a lot of purple this season. Amen, amen, amen. So, yes, as I was saying, you know, it's like what we find in the church today as well is that um, people want to be saved from the penalty of sin, but they want to continue sinning. As I said, for those of you who've just come on, you see my eyeballs going up. I've said this quite a few times. I'm not convulsing. I'm just looking at the, the laptop in front of me, okay? Because this was an ad hoc one, and I will explain why it was an ad hoc one later. <laughs> so, 
yes, it's like this intellectual element it's important, you know, but if we don't back it up with the two other elements that I've mentioned before, it, 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 it just becomes a thing where you are just afraid of your punishment because of the sin, but you have no hatred towards sin. And as I said, there are many people who are, how would I say it? Many people who are afraid of the penalty of sin. But they want to continue sinning. It's happening a lot. So it's like when you preach the truth, when you preach the raw truth, many people get angry. See, I'm, I'm soft today. I'm, 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 I'm building up. I'm building up. But when you preach a word that is true, is raw, and that sometimes it's like often like a punch in the gut, people don't like it. They get angry. They get offend, offended because you've struck a chord. You know, and a lot of those people are those people who they don't want the penalty of sin, but they want to continue doing what they're doing. And they think that even the smallest things is allowed. Oh, you can continue gossiping or you can continue lying. It's okay. That one is small compared to fornicating and all the sin is sin. And we need to recognize the sinfulness of sin. And like I said, many of the things are not being, these things, sin, repentance are not being addressed in the church. And like I said, I thank God for the Brook Place. That thing, you will, you will face it, whether you like it or yes, not whether you like it or not, whether you like it or yes, you will face it. We will talk about repentance. We talk about purity. We talk about holiness. We talk about these things and they are missing from the church. The church is deficient of these messages but we will talk about them. Now, look, we're moving on to the emotional element of repentance. The emotional element of repentance. You see, repentance can also be defined and it's often defined as a godly sorrow for a godly sorrow for sin. When we look at the second Corinthians, the second letter that Paul was writing to the Corinthians, he said in that letter, for godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. I want, in fact, if you have your Bibles with you, I want us to go to that scripture because I want to read verse 11 as well. It's just so deep. I'm like, wow, okay. And then we're going to talk about it a little bit because I believe it's necessary. I think my video, I think my live is lagging a bit. I think you guys are like two miles behind, but you'll catch up. It's all good. It's all good. We're, we are, we are moving. We are moving. Glory to God. So let me read this scripture again. I'm going to read it from verse 10. It's second Corinthians chapter seven from verse 10. But you know what? I'm going to read it from verse nine. And then we talk about it. Second Corinthians chapter seven from verse nine. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance for you were made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. Verse 10. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. Now let me read verse 11, because this is deep. For observe these very thing, sorry, for observe this very thing, that you sorrowed in a godly manner, what diligence it produced in you, what clearing of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what vindication. In all things you proved yourself to be clear. So because of godly sorrow, 
because of godly sorrow, right? It led to repentance and a repentance that would, was not regretted. In other words, you have turned from your sinful ways and your mind has changed and you haven't gone back on what you were doing before. You didn't regret that repentance that you, that you, the repentance or the change of heart that happened in you. There are many who say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, I'm sorry I did that. But they go back and continue doing the same thing again. So is that godly sorrow that leads to repentance and a repentance that you would, you do not turn, you do not turn away from, you continue to press in on it. You continue to press in on it. And then it says that the worldly sorrow or the sorrow of the world produces death. What death are we talking about here? We're talking about spiritual death. We're talking about spiritual death. What is spiritual death? I was saying the other day to a brother of mine that when your conscience has been seared, when that discernment from right and wrong has been seared, you're living a life where you're doing wrong, but you're none, you don't care. You're indifferent. When, you, when there's an indifference in your actions and your inactions is when your conscience has been seared. That's spiritual death. You know, you, you, you're not really bothered. The thing that bothers me sometimes, <clears throat> in fact, it bothers me all of the time. If there's a lack of repentance in the house of God, and many of these people is like their conscience has been seared. Imagine the man of God, like you, you have your, your leader, you have your apostle, you have your apostle, you have your pastor, your evangelist, your preacher, he's preaching in the church and he's preaching has such a powerful message. And the message is convict is really convicting you. Right. And there are people there that are guilty of the thing that he is saying. So that timely word of obedience that's coming from the man or the woman of God is specifically for somebody or some people in that place at that time. And the word is coming forth and that word is supposed to not bring condemnation because condemnation is not of God. Conviction. It's supposed to bring conviction. It's supposed to pierce you that this one is really, this, this one has really got to me. It's like in the book of Acts, the book of Acts, I think it's chapter two, verse 38. It says that the people, when they heard Peter preaching, they were, they were cut to the heart. They were cut to the heart. It was like, oh God, what are you saying? My God, have we really done this? What have I done? That conviction. And because of that conviction, they wanted to know how can they be saved? They wanted to know how will I be saved? What do I do to be saved? And Peter was telling them to repent, believe on the Lord and be baptized. You see, so when a man of God is preaching, preaching a word, a woman of God is preaching a word and you are convicted in your spirit that my God, I, I need to, I need to change my ways. But then there are people in the house of God that their conscience has been seared. You know that you are a prolific and, 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 and you, you, you are, you, you lie, you lie, you lie out to, you can't lie anymore. That's one thing. Let me warn you about another thing about me. I can go from posh English to East London to African because I, I, uh, my heritage is Ghanaian. I can mix all the accents in one. Everything is mixed up in one. So there's something for everybody, right? So as I was saying, that was a warning. So as I was saying, you know, it's like you, 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 you lie. You are, you are so artistic in your lying and you know, you lie. And then the man of God, the woman of God is preaching a word. And you know, that word, that word is supposed to be for you at that time because you've been lying a lot recently. And you say, Ish, this word is supposed to be for me. But instead of you to receive that word and turn from your ways. You are saying, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Exactly. Meanwhile, it's for you. It's for you. 
that when your conscience has been seared, you're, you're so indifferent with the things that you've been you've been fornicating. You've been fornicating, and the man of God is preaching, and you are there. Mm -mm. Hmm. You're, you're, you're like this, you know. Hmm. My God, my God, my God, my God. Hmm. But meanwhile, you've been fornicating, but your conscience is seared. Your conscience is seared. So because of that, you are you you are still moving in the in, in the same oh spiritual death. You've become stagnant in the faith. You become stagnant because nothing pierces you. Your heart has been hardened. Your heart has been hardened. I want us to look at another scripture. Because this this one, let's go to Luke chapter. This one is just dropped in my spirit. Let's go to Luke chapter 18, verse 13. Luke chapter 18, verse 13. Let me see. Let me see. I think this is it. I think so. I think so. Luke. Chapter 18, verse 13. Hmm. Okay, let me read it from verse 10. It says, oops, sorry. It says, this is Jesus speaking, okay? Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortionists, unjust, adulterous, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess and the tax collector standing far off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven but beat his chest saying God this is all he said God God be merciful to me a sinner be merciful to me a sinner and hear what Jesus is saying. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. I'm not making it up. It's there. So we have so many people in the house of God who are Pharisees because, oh, they want to show, you see, eye service. My pops talked about eye service a lot. He doesn't like eye service. I don't like that word. Eye service. You want to do things for people to see you. And that does not justify your spiritual maturity. It doesn't justify how close you are with God. It doesn't justify how born again or how holy and how spiritual and how whatever you are. It doesn't. So if you have this Pharisee, I pay my tithes. I come and I pray and he will stand in the middle where everyone can see him. I service and be shouting, oh Lord, I pray. I thank God. Imagine he's thanking God that he's not like the other, like the others. Wow. And that is the mindset that some of us have these days. This is, this is the mindset, self-righteousness. We have it in the church. I've been there before. God forgive me. You see, and this is why repentance is so important. We have to continue to examine ourselves, examine our hearts all of the time. Because there are times where we've seen certain things happening in the house of God. Not even in just our own houses, but just outside overall. Okay. And we see things happening 
And then when we're preaching about certain subject matters, you'll be shouting, yes, as, you, as if you are not a monk. But you are just as bad as the people who are doing the crime or doing the sin. Just because somebody is fornicating and you are only gossiping or you are only grudging your sister or your brother, you know, secretly or giving them the cold shoulder or whatever the case may be, it doesn't mean that you are, you are exempt, that you are cool. You also have to repent. So daily, 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 you examine your heart. Oh God, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? So as I was saying, back onto the emotional element of repentance, you know, we cannot measure the, the true extent of how much emotion is needed in repentance. Just because somebody is crying on the floor, my God, I've seen it plenty of times in the past. We, we see it all of the time. You see it on the TV, you see it wherever, whereby people will come to the altar. They will lie down there. They will flip around. They will cry boogers. Every, every, yeah, they will cry. They, they, oh my gosh, they will do all sorts. And you think to yourself, Oh, this person is very, this person looks very, very sorry. <laughs> this person looks very, very repentant. And then when they're finished with their melodramatic performance, because we have a lot of stage management and stage performance going on in the house of God. Yes. You know, so when they're finished with their Grammy Oscar nominating performance, then they go out and continue doing the same thing. So we cannot say that emotion is a measure of true repentance, you see, but then there will definitely be a stirring of the heart. When the stirring of the heart comes, usually it is accompanied with some tears but not necessarily all of the time. So like I was saying in the post, I put up a post, I think it was yesterday on my page and I shared it on my, on my, uh, on my wall as well, you know, and what I was saying in, in all essence is that there's a difference between sorrow. There's a difference between, like, sorry, the difference between remorse and repentance, a difference between true sorrow because of sin and feeling shame because of the sin that you performed. Why do I say that? I say that because you may only be remorseful or you may only show yourself to be repentant about something that you did because you were caught. Because you were caught and because you were exposed, that is why you are repentant. That's not true repentance. That's remorse. That's remorse. You see, just because you were exposed, just because you were caught, just because somebody found out about what you did, or because you know that somebody knows what you did that's in the same place as you, you have to show yourself to be repentant because of it. No, no, no. That one, that, that, that one, it doesn't fly with God. It doesn't fly. You see, so we need to stop the melodramatics. We need to stop the eye service. We need to stop all of these things that are happening in the house of God. It's an issue. You know, you wouldn't have stopped that unbecoming behavior, that kind of behavior and that attitude that you are showing, right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't have stopped if you were not caught or if you were not pulled up for it or if you were not rebuked for it, you see? So that sorrow, the true repentance or that sorrow for your sin, that emotion must be followed with the, what, what I say, the voluntary element, There's, there should be a voluntary element of repentance, a voluntary, a voluntary element of your repentance. That means you must be prepared to exercise your will as part of your repentance. <clears throat> you must be prepared to exercise your will as uh, um, part of that repentance for before the repentance to be truly effective you must be willing to exercise your will for that there should be a turning away from sin 
and a turning to, a wholehearted turning to Christ for forgiveness. A wholehearted turn into Christ. A wholehearted turn into Christ. You know, let me, I want to, I want to, I want to <laughs> I wanna explain something to you. The reason why I'm here today is because I said at the beginning of this live that this is an act of my repentance because I was listening to a live yesterday evening by Pastor Herman, pa Pastor Herman Madimba. I don't know if he's with us. I think he's online with us. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, man of God. And he was given a teaching of, or he was discussing with us and he was exhorting us and encouraging whoever was listening that take the first step. That was what it was entitled. Take the first step. And to cut a long story short, he went in and he said that there are many of us that God has called us to do something and we haven't done it. We haven't done it. And because we think, oh, maybe I'm not prepared or Oh, I haven't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not fully equipped or I'm not really ready or, you know. So because of these little doubts and these little niggles that are going on in our mind, we don't act in obedience to what God is telling us to do at a time. And because we don't act in that obedience of what God is telling us to do, what we're really saying is that we don't trust what God is about to do in us. We don't trust what God is getting ready to do in us. We don't trust that God has called us and whatever he has called us to do, he will provide for us. He will give us what we need in order to do it. So when you're saying, oh yeah, but I'm, I'm not prepared. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to say. What if it comes out wrong? What if it's not fully, you know, what if I don't sound too theological? What if I don't sound too spiritual? What if somebody pops on and starts asking me some complex questions? What if somebody does this? What if somebody does? By doing that, that doubt that you're showing is a lack of trust and lack of dependency on God. And this is what Pastor Herman was talking about. And I was like, whoa. And the one thing that he said as well is that when you take that first step, then without you taking that step, you won't know what else God has for you. And then somebody may be listening to this right now whose life depends on this message or whose next step depends on this message. It's the same way my pop said in a teaching some time ago. It's like basically your calling or what you're being prepared to do is like sitting in a car or sitting in your vehicle at a green light. And all the other cars are behind you and they can't move because you haven't moved. So because I haven't moved, there are people behind me who can't move. So there are people's kickoff or kickstart that are dependent on my obedience to move. And I've been disobedient all this time. I've been disobedient all this time. And I'm like, oh God, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry that I, I really didn't put my trust in you. It's all very well being biblically sound. It's all very well having a, an articulate speech. It's all very well being confident and being able to talk with people, amongst people. Me, I mean, ask anyone here, you know, I, will, I can sit down and talk to anyone face to face. But now because I'm looking at the camera at myself, it's like, okay, this is a bit strange, you know. But now that I've done it, I've done it. Glory to God, you know. And this is an act of obedience. And it's an act of defiance against fear. And I've done it. Glory to God. 2020 cannot be the same as the 2019. We have crossed over. This is a new decade. Things have to change. Whatever you were doing in 2019 that is not conducive or productive to your growth, that is not conducive or productive to what you're going to do in this season, you need to leave. I, I said, you know, during prayer, when we did the crossover, that we are crossing over with no carryover. 
So I can't carry over fear. I can't carry over doubt. I have to do what I have been called to do. You know, so Pastor Herman had come out and said, look, listen, you're, you're, you're just showing your disobedience. You're just showing that you do not trust in God. You're showing that you, you are defying what God has told you to do. And I was like, oh my God, the way I love my God so much, the way I love you so much, Lord, but look at the way I'm behaving. This doesn't show that I love you the way I say that I love you. I need to repent. It hit me like a good dirty slap. It was a good stiff, a good, I said to him afterwards, man of God, that one was a stiff slap. You know, so now I've woken up and I said, right, I need to exercise the will. I need to exercise the will. I need to, I need to do what God has called me to do. And I need to repent. As I said before, that to repent is a turning, it's a turning of your heart and it's a turning and of, of purpose. It's a change of heart. It's a change of purpose. It's a change of view, you know? So that needs to be exercised with will for it to be truly effective and exercising of your will is action basically. And here I am. So this is me showing that I am re truly repentant for the fact that I doubted God when he told me to go. And I'm sitting down, okay, I need to do some more study. I need to uh, get myself sorted. I need to, you know, even the littlest things like coming on online. I know some of us act like this, like, oh God, no, my, 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 my uh, eyebrows need to be done. My, my edges. I mean, I don't, I don't mess with my edges though, because I, I want to keep, I want to keep what I've got there. So I try not to <laughs> see, I'm just being real. I'm just being real with you. I don't mess with them, um, that much, you know? So I, I just want, I just want to be myself. I just want to be myself. You see what you find is that so many people are trying to be somebody that they're not. And they think that that's the only way that they're going to be accepted. But as I've learned over the past year or so, that my persona, the way I am will attract a, a, a specific or will attract a certain type of audience. You know, I don't need everybody to follow me. I don't need everybody to agree with me. I don't need everybody to accept me. You know, I'm just going to be the way I am. And whoever I speak to, the lives of the people that I speak into, I pray to God that they will be blessed and they will be transformed in Jesus name. So as I was saying, uh, the voluntary element means, you know, that we have to turn away from that sin. We have to exercise will, exercise our will to be truly effective. And we need to wholeheartedly turn to Christ for forgiveness. You know, so I think next week we're going to talk about, it may be sooner than next week actually, but I wanted to go a bit deeper into the importance of repentance but before I do that I just want to just quickly finish off you know so one of the words for repentance means to turn and we see that in the book of Luke 15 the prodigal son and the reason why I'm talking about voluntary and exercise in the will and action is because this is exactly what the prodigal son did right this is exactly what he did let's go there Luke 15 Luke 15, hallelujah. Let me just read it from, I wasn't going to read it from this verse, <clears throat> but I'm going to, to verse 17. <coughs> I don't know where this cough came from, <coughs> but the devil is a whole liar. <coughs> I will speak. So verse 17 says, but when he came to himself, this is Luke 15, Luke chapter 15 from verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants and have bread enough to, and uh, have bread enough and to spare and i perish here with hunger so that bit there is like he the bit that is really significant here is that but when he came to himself 
So it's obvious that he was not himself. He was not himself. Something changed. Something clicked. Something broke in him. Then he realized that, mm -mm. no, 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 no. You see, and now he's, he's talking logically. That all these servants, all the food, where, where I'm coming, I'm here starving. Nonsense. I will go back. And hear what he says in verse 18. I will arise and go to my father. And I will say to him, let me stop there. I will arise and I will go to my father. You see, that is true repentance. You see, when we are stuck in sin, when we are stuck in the quagmire of sin, when we are, we've been immobilized by sin, sin will cause you to feel shame, right? And that shame will keep you in the place where you should not be. It will keep you down. But then this prodigal son said, I will arise and go to my father. I pray today that anybody who is struggling, anybody who is feeling immobilized by sin, even the littlest of sin, that you will arise and go to your father. Arise and go to your father. I pray that prayer for you today, that arise and go to your father. And then he said, <clears throat> And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. So what is he doing? He's confessing. He's confessing his sin. I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. He doesn't even feel like he's worthy to be the, the, the son that he was before. You see what shame can do? You see what hidden sin can do? You know? So, the most interesting bit for me here as well is that he made that action. In verse number 20, he says, and he arose. You see, in verse 17, sorry, verse 18, he said, I will arise. You see, that happens a lot in the, in the church. It happens a lot with us. Lip service. Oh, no, 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 no. This season, this is my season. This is my, this is, this is another level. This is the next level. We will be talking, 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 talking. Ah, you are talking till you can't talk anymore. That I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You see, the prodigal son said, I will arise and go to my father. So he said it, but then in verse 20, it says, and he arose and came to his father. Hallelujah. So I said to myself, I, I need to open my mouth. I was even telling my pops, my father in the Lord, I was telling uh, apostle, um, apostle Oscar Gobadia, for those of you who don't know him, he is the oversight for the Brook Place, him and pastor Triumph Gobadia. My mother and my father in the Lord, for the Brook Place. I, I was saying that, no, Pops, I need to open my mouth. And he said, yes, you need to open your mouth. But again, you know, there's only so much the father and the mother can do. And then my mother in the Lord also gave a powerful preach as we were uh, on the first, um, the first Sunday of our crossover into 2020. And one of the things that she mentioned is that there are many of you here that said you're going to start your businesses, you're going to start your ministries, you're going to do this. You've been saying it, you've been saying it, you've been saying it, uh, and then nothing, we haven't seen anything. But let 2020 be, let this, let this season be the season of action. And funny enough, I did opening prayer that day and, you know, it was so profound. That is what the Lord laid on my heart, that this is a season of action and implementation. And then my mother in the Lord came to preach a preach and she was talking about action and implementation. You see? So now here we are talking about the prodigal son who has basically exercised his will. He is repentant and he has exercised his will right? And he said, I will arise and go to my father. 
that is in verse 18. And then in verse 20, he says, I, and he arose and he arose. He actually did what he said he was going to do. And he arose and came to his father. So let this be a season of, and she arose and he arose. You have said it now do it. You have said it now do it. Glory to God. You know, so now these are the things, these are, these are some of the things that, um, I wanted to address with you just as an intro, right? So in a nutshell, when we are repenting, there are certain things that we have to do. There are certain things that should be, they should be clear. They should be apparent. They should be obvious, you know, and number one, that is to confess sin confess the sin confess the sin confess the sin don't keep it buried inside you <coughs> this cough <coughs> i don't know what happened there it just <laughs> yeah i don't know what just happened there but it just went off but we're back again devil you can't stop me me i will open my mouth right so confessing sin so for i will declare my iniquity I will be sorry for my sin. I will declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. That's Psalms 38 verse 18. For I will declare, I will declare, I will declare my iniquity and I will be sorry for my sin. Hallelujah. And then again, what did the prodigal son say in Luke 15, 21? He said, I have sinned against heaven confession 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 and then number two forsaking sin forsaking sin he that covers his sin shall not prosper saints don't cover your sin when you start asking yourself which is not always the case but when you start asking yourself why are things not moving well why are things not going the way i want them to go I had these things all planned out and I'm sure that this is what the Lord wanted me to do, but nothing seems to be going well. You need to examine your heart. Go deeper. Stop the blame game. Stop the blame game. It's not everybody else's fault all of the time. You know, sometimes you need to examine your heart and look deep inside yourself and say, what is it that I have done? You know, that sin in itself. Look, as I've just said to you, I've just said to you, your inactions, your inaction is also a sin, not just your actions. It's not all the time that what we do that is sinful. It's sometimes what we don't do. That's why I'm here. I don't want that again. I don't want my inactions to be my sin. I don't want my inactions to be that, oh, because I didn't open my mouth, because I didn't just, you know, start teaching. I didn't, I, I, because I didn't start preaching because I didn't start encouraging people the way I know that God has called me to do because of that, things are not moving well for me. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let me tell you another thing again. There was a time where I was going through this, uh, um, I'm talking for myself only whereby I started to question certain leadership within a team. And some of the things that I used to say, I was saying was so negative. And I knew that there were things that maybe that I was saying, um, that I wouldn't say to the person themselves. So yeah, I had to examine myself that hold on a minute. Now this is gossip. It's gossip. It's sinful. It's demonic. It's witchcraft. It's everything. It's just wrong. You know, it's just wrong on all levels. Okay. I'm sharing this. This is a testimony. In fact, this is a testimony. Um, and it's like, this thing was bothering me. It was bothering me that the Lord was just really dealing with me, really, really dealing with me. I'm telling you. And it's like, and then I, the Holy Spirit was just telling me, you, you need to confess, you need to repent and you need to apologize. You just need to do what you have to do. So I called this person and I said, look, this is what I've done. I've questioned your leadership. I've done this. I've done that. And I, I'm really, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry, you know, and this person with her good heart was good enough, mature enough and discerning enough to forgive me, you know, 
and I talked with that person. I talked about some of the things that, you know, I did. I talked about, you know, how, I'm, how sorry I am and, you know, where I would like to see the team going forward and things that I would like to see happening and all. See, this is the body of Christ. This is how it's supposed to be. This is how it's supposed to be done. We're not perfect. When we are not perfect and nobody's expecting us to be perfect, you know. And at times, you're going to have to just take the rebuke, take the blast, take the hit. <coughs> there, may, <coughs> there may be times because of your obedience that it may look like an opposition to others. But be obedient. Be obedient and be whatever you do, let it be pleasing unto the Lord. And I tell you what, during the time I applied for a, a particular job, and I applied for that job like back in October, right? And this is October, just before the crossover. <clears throat> and I was aware that I was successful, very successful in this interview. And it was taking so long. And I was thinking, what's going on? Why is there so much delay going on? October passed, November passed, December was on its way coming. And I'm thinking, oh God, crossover is coming. And, you know, I was on my knees all of the time. God, why is this thing happening? What's going on? And like I said, during that time, the Lord started to deal with me. And I started to examine my heart. This is why I say it's so important. Regularly, regularly examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. So as you're examining yourself, the Lord will speak to you and tell you where you've gone wrong. And then you're able to address these issues. And this is where I was, this, I know this is where this, my, my lack of obedience in this, in this sense, because I've been good or I feel that I've been good. I've been doing things the way I'm supposed to be doing it. I'm not doing what I'm not supposed to do and all the rest of it. And then all of a sudden zoop, there was a standstill. So now I was obedient and I did what I was supposed to do that same morning. That same morning, the, the daytime of that morning, because it was quite late at night um, when I finished making this phone call, I just had to do it. I knew it was late, but I did it anyway, you know, but that, the daytime of that morning, I just got a phone call. Broom. Hello, Jacqueline, we're happy to offer you to do, do, do this, 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 this. And let me tell you something else that was so awesome about this testimony. It's like I was promoted before I was even hired. That is how, that is how great God is. I applied for one job and then when they offered me the job, it was a rather a managerial position rather than the one that I applied for in the first place. So I was promoted before I even started the job. Glory to God. This, now this is what I'm talking about. And this is God showing us that, see, if you listen to me, if you trust in me, don't be afraid of what people are going to say. Don't be afraid of what's going to happen. Don't be afraid of the aftermath. Just trust in me. Then he will surely show you that he is God. He is God. You know? So, as I said, confess the sin. Declare where you have gone wrong. And then, number two, forsake the sin. He that covers his sin shall not prosper. But who... Whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. So don't cover your sin. If you know that you've done something wrong, whether it's an action or inaction, deal with it. Now, it also says, let the wicked forsake. Sorry, I, I forgot to mention that he that covers his sin and shall he that covers his sin shall not prosper. But whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. That's Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. Then we have, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. That's Isaiah 55 verse 7. Isaiah 55 verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. You're probably wondering, why don't work? I mean, that's a bit heavy, isn't it? The word wicked. But anything that is not of God, anything that God is not pleased with is wicked before his sight. Okay. And then number three, turning to God. 
turning to God. There's no point confessing your sin and then forsaking your sin and then you're just hovering around in the wilderness. No. Turn to God. Turn wholeheartedly to God. Yep. Yeah? We must not only turn from sin, but unto God. And you get two references here. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 9. Write this down. And then Acts 26 verse 18. Acts 26 verse 18. So we should not only turn from sin, but we should also go to God. We should stay with God. We should stick with God. We should press in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there we have it, my peoples. I just wanted to give a little intro about repentance, but the next time I come on, come on I want us to talk about the importance of repentance. The import, why, is, why is repentance so important? And I want us to look deeper into the scriptures about repentance. I want to look at a few places where it talks about repentance and we'll have a discussion about that because I think it's very needed. It is, it is essential. It is essential. It is essential. As I said, it's all very well, all of the time listening to, yes, you are breaking through. You are coming through. You are doing this. You are doing that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We hear so many words. We hear so many preaching and sermons and everything that bring us to our feet, right? This is a quote from Smith's, Wiggle, uh, S- um, Smith's Wigglesworth, an old time general, right? But I'm paraphrasing it in my own way because it's really true that, you know, we need the word that is going to bring us to our knees. It's not always the word that brings us to our feet that we should be listening to, jumping up and down. Hallelujah, hallelujah, jumping. Yay, 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 yay. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. No, we need the one that will bring us to our knees as well. The one that will really cause us to examine ourselves. The one that will really cause us to say, my God, what am I doing? What have I done? What is the word of God? What is the word that is going to come to you? When it, when will that word hit you that, my God, I need to chase after God. I need to, ch- I need to chase after God. I need to get in the word. I need to know God for myself. I need to know God for myself. Don't be a lazy Christian. Don't be a lazy Christian. You just sit down and, and you're just sitting down listening to the, 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 uh, the charismatic, powerful, eloquent, words that are coming out of the man of God, the women of God's mouth. No, get in the word for your, get in there for yourself. Get in there for yourself. Some of us, we think to, oh, but it's really hard. Of course, it's going to be hard if you're reading the words. See, I've got my cover. Um, Prophetess Audrey, don't laugh. Don't bring up that thing. I know what you're going to say. As soon as you saw the cover, don't say anything. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, um, I'm not going to pull it on my head, by the way. So anyway, um, yeah, as I was saying, don't just, you need to get into the word. You need to, you need to press into the word, right? Definitely. It's going to be difficult to press into the word if we keep getting into bed and using the, the, the Bible as a bedtime read. No, no, no. That's another thing I had to examine my heart about, you know, you've got so much time in the day to get up early in the morning. You go to work, you do all your other bits and pieces, your food shopping, your tidying, or you've got so much time or you can, you can, how do I say, section your time for all these other things in life. And then you just whatever is left oh god have mercy on us whatever is left at the end of the day is what you want to use for god no whatever is left at the end of the day is what you want to use for god no 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 my brothers my sisters this is not the way forward at all It's not the way forward. It wasn't the way forward in 2019, in 2018, 17, 16, 15, or it has never been and it shall never be and it should never be. 
So in this 2020, make up your mind to have time for God. You know, God is so amazing. It's like I go to work, right? You know, I've got this new job. I was out of work for such a long time. It was hard for me financially. It was really, really tough. But you know, even in that time, glory to God. I spent so much time in the presence of God that all that time that I was, I was not at work. I spent a lot of time in the presence of God. Sometimes I could just even just in stillness, just sit down and just ponder on his love, just ponder on his greatness, just ponder on what he is about to do in my life. What in fact, what he's actually doing in my life, you know, and I learned that it was also a training ground you know, that when you do have, you won't take it for granted. You won't take it for granted because when you didn't have, you were saying to yourself, okay, when I do have, I'm going to use it to do this. I'm going to use it to bless this. Because even when I didn't have the little that I had, I knew that there were others that needed it more than me. So I would sow into others, you know, uh, God, I know, is merciful, God is faithful, and God is God of his word, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So seek him, press in, go, go, go in to the word of God. That's what I will say to you. That's what I'll say to you. And you will be so surprised, you will be so amazed, you'll be so amazed. Nobody is asking you to, to go deep, 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 deep um, into like the theology of everything just try and get even to the basics of it at first of the word at first and then build up from there don't read the bible in bed <laughs> that's that, that's one of my warnings don't read the bible in bed it just simply doesn't work the next thing you know you're waking up you don't even know where you are the the, the pages will be crushed or whatever whatever the case may be is it, it just doesn't work you know, so try and discipline yourself and purpose yourself, purpose your heart, purpose in your heart that I need to know more. I need to press in more and don't let it be just because, for instance, oh, I'm going to come on a Facebook live. So let me get into the word of God. So I've got something to say. Let this be part of your lifestyle, getting to know the voice of God, the mind of God, the heart of God. Let it be part of your lifestyle. I, I go to work now and um, it's like, I, any excuse that I have or any time that I have my lunch break, I'll put on my worship music or I'll listen to my audio Bible. Or I'll listen to a sermon or I'll read a book or something, you know, um, because that's what I like to do. That's what I like to do. And a lot of the time I just can't wait to get home so that I can just get in his presence. Although his presence is always with me, sometimes it, distractions and everything that you're hearing around you it's, it's not the same you know but um hunger after the things of god i would say hunger after the things of god anything that you were doing before that or not doing that you need to repent about i would suggest strongly suggest strongly advise strongly repent you know, and just as this is the page, the 5812 solution, like I always like to say that if you are a problem, if you're part of the problem, repent. And if you're not part of the solution, repent. And see, again, here we are talking about actions and inactions, you know, so either way, repent. You know, that's what I'll say to you. Um, so I will be coming back to speak more about repentance. I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to we'll talk about the importance of repentance. And then after that, hopefully if God wills, we'll talk about faith in repentance. You know, um, these are very really important subjects that we're not hearing much about them in the house of God. And it needs to be taught. I'm not a theologian. Um, and But that is not a bad thing. You know. I am a teacher. I know that. I know I have a calling to teach. And I will teach. 
but I'm not going to get all fancy and theological and all of that. I'm building up. I'm still learning. I'm on a journey. And you are welcome to take that journey with me. Um, it'll be nice, in fact, you can take the journey with me. Let's do it together, you know, and also in your own time. Let's not spend too many, too much time, all the time jumping from here, there, following this one, following that one. You know, we, we, we get so excited about what other people's revelations are about God, but we don't spend time in the scripture to find out what God is saying to us about that same scripture that he gave a revelation to about somebody for somebody else you know so it's all very well getting excited getting excited about what somebody has said uh, in based on the revelation that they got but what about your revelation what about the revelation that God has to give to you you know so let's let's get into the scripture let's get into it um now I have come out, here I am, the 5812 solution, I'm a kingdom solutionist, I know that's what God has called me to do, there are many problems in the world, many problems happening in the church, in the body of Christ, and I believe that I am called to provide solutions to some of the problems that are going on, and how do I provide these solutions? By teaching by preaching, by exhorting, by comforting, by encouraging, you know, so let's all be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Glory to God. So I thank you all for tuning in and I will see you all very soon. God bless you. God richly bless you all and we will chat soon. So now I'm going to figure out how to turn this thing off. But before I do that, quick word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this evening. We thank you for this time spent together. Father, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray, Lord, that you have spoken to their hearts and you will continue to speak to their hearts. I pray, Lord, if there's anything that is causing them to not move forward in what you have called them to do, I pray, Lord, that you will speak to them. I pray, Lord, that this will be a time and a season of action. Father, I pray that they will exercise their will, Father, to do what is right, to do what you have called them to do. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord, that for whoever has heard this message, that has felt down, they have felt heavy, they have felt downtrodden, they have felt discouraged, I pray that this is a word of encouragement to set them free. Father, I thank you that you are the be all, you are the end all. Father, I thank you. I bless the lives of everybody on this on this live, I bless the lives of everybody under the sound of my voice. I pray, Lord, even today as I speak, that this day will be a day of open heavens for them. I pray, Lord, that they will continue, Father, to press into your word. They will continue to search the scriptures. They will continue to learn about your heart, your mind, my God. Father, raise up the church, raise up the body of Christ to do great exploits in this time. Father, we are tired of just seeing demonstration without power. We are tired, Lord, of not seeing the manifestations of your glory in this time. Father, in order for this to happen, Father, we must understand that revival starts with self. Father, let there be a spiritual awakening in everybody that is listening under the sound of my voice. Let there be a spiritual awakening. Father, we call for revival in the hearts of everybody here in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Father, I bless you. I thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for giving me the strength. I thank you, Lord, for giving me the encouragement. I thank you and I'm joyful and I'm grateful that I have been obedient to your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have prayed with thanksgiving. Good night to you, everybody. And I will see you very soon.
Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you all. And good night.